Hello, this is Miss Sharon again. How are you? Feel like I haven't seen you in a long time, but I'm glad you're back so we can do our Sunday school time together. We can't come to the class together, but at least we can talk together and think about things together. How's your Christmas break going? I'm sure you're enjoying having a little time off from school and you remember that I'm still praying for you and all your church family is praying for you. I do look forward to the day when we can see each other in person. Uh, but in the meantime, until that time, you remember that I love you. Always remember that just as God was with Mary and Joseph, God is with you. We read in the Christmas story how God was with all these people. Well, God is with you too. God is with us now. God has not deserted his people. And also remember that your whole church family loves you. Now let's look at our church calendar. It's different. <clears throat> How can that be? Well, we are no longer in Advent. We're no longer in Advent. We're in this white season right here. That's why you notice I am wearing white. I'm going to take off my jacket so you can see what else uh, I'm wearing and see if you think any of it is relevant for our lesson today. You can think about it later, but we do have uh, some Christmas things on here, but it's mostly, mostly white. So we have these three Sundays. Noah Advent, we'll finish those. The first Sunday is, well this, this is usually called Christmas Tide or just the Sundays after Christmas and after Christmas. Three Sundays. Uh, the first one for Christmas, then Epiphany, and then the Baptism of the Lord. Now for the Baptism of the Lord, Jesus is a grown man. He's not baptized as many of you were as a baby, but it's the Baptism of the Lord when uh, he actually was baptized in the Jordan River. Today, we're doing the Christmas season uh, lesson. So what do you suppose? You thought, well, we've already talked about Jesus being born. What is it that we're going to talk about in this lesson? We know, and you know the color is white. We're in the Christmas season. The color is white. It starts, you know when the Christmas season started, or Christmas tide is called by some. It actually starts on December 24th, or started on Christmas Eve, and the color is white. It will start on Christmas Eve, the color is white. But today we still have our Advent wreath. We have our three purple candles, our pink candle, and our white candle. And we will light all of those today. Won't that be exciting? We'll get to light the candle of love, joy, peace. What comes next? Love, joy, peace. I was saying the fruits of the Spirit. You know the fruits of the Spirit? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faith, gentleness, and self-control. But our candles start with hope. The hope, peace, joy, love, and then our Christ candle. Hope, peace, joy, love, and then the Christ candle. We notice that our wreath is in a circle. Our candles are arranged in a circle. And that reminds us that God's love never ends, which is a good thing to remember during a pandemic time and when things are different than it has been, that even though we may have some sad times and not get to do things that we would like to because of all the pandemic problems, we know that God's love never ends. Let's say that together three times. God's love never ends. God's love never ends. God's love never ends. God's love never ends. Now, we, it's exciting because we're going to get to light all of these candles at the end of our lesson. I really wish you were here and you could take turns lighting the candles. It doesn't seem quite fair that I get to light all the candles this year. But now, let's go ahead and begin our study by lighting this candle. And what does this candle remind us? This candle reminds us that God is here. God is always with us. God is with me while I'm recording this. And God is with you while you're listening to it. But let's start with our prayers. Let's all bow our heads. Listen for the word Jesus. And then we will clap on the Amen. Dear God of hope, peace, joy, and love, on this first Sunday of Christmas tide, we remember the birth of Jesus. And we gather together, virtually and in our homes, 
to celebrate the birth of your son, Jesus. Thank you for our Sunday school group and our church. Come, Lord Jesus. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Amen. How many times was Jesus in there? Three, maybe? We'll have to see. You all, I'll talk to you about it later. Our lesson today for the first Sunday after Christmas is, as you might expect, from the New Testament. It's from the book of Luke. As you know, as we've talked about before, the books of Matthew and Luke are where we go to find the stories about Jesus and Jesus' life. Uh, that's where we find the Christmas story. Now, what is the Christmas story? Why don't you tell me what you remember? Let's review the Christmas story. If you were here, I'm sure you could just tell me things. I could go around to every person in the chair and you would give me answers. But let's just review a little bit. Uh, you know that what's happening here in this picture? Ah, that's the angel coming to visit Mary. Remember, the angel came and told Mary, you know, you are blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. You're going to have a baby and name him Jesus, and he's going to be the Son of God, Savior of the world. Mary was a little surprised because she wasn't yet married. She was planning on marrying Joseph, but what happened? Well, the angel came to Joseph, too. Joseph was upset. He went over to visit Mary, and he said, uh, Oh, Joseph, guess what? An angel came to me, and I'm going to have a baby. And he thought, yeah, right. So he went away a little upset. But an angel came to Joseph and said, Joseph, don't be afraid to take Mary as your wife. What she told you is true. She is going to have the Son of God. And so Joseph went, and they took care of Mary and Jesus too. So what happened next? Did they get to just have the baby there where they lived in Nazareth? No, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus. So they had to go to their hometowns where they were born. And do you remember where that was? Yes, they had to go to Bethlehem. And they tried to find somewhere to stay for the night. So they just went to a nice hotel, right? No, everything was full. You know, the Bible says they went to a stable because the inn was full. And that night, what happened? Yes, that night, baby Jesus was born. And you know the story about the shepherds coming. The angels came to the shepherds. You remember what they sang? They sang what we usually say. We know they sang glory to God in the highest. Do you remember how you sang that? Glory to God in the highest. Glory to God in the highest. Peace on earth, goodwill to all. Glory to God in the highest. So those pictures we're quite familiar with. What about this picture? Who do you think this is? This is part of the Christmas story too. What's happening in this picture? Well, this is showing some people called Simeon and Anna. And I wonder what's happening there. Well, that's what our story is about today, is about what is happening in this picture. We find this in Luke, uh, in Luke's Gospel, we had Matthew, Mark, Luke, and you know what Luke, who Luke was? No, he wasn't one of Jesus' disciples. It seems from what we read in the Bible that Luke was a doctor, a physician that took care of people. So he was probably a very learned man. He knew a lot. And he probably heard about Jesus from Paul. Do you remember the stories of Paul who became one of Jesus' disciples later when uh, the angel appeared to him on the road to Damascus? Uh, we've talked about Paul quite a bit in Sundays before uh, Advent time. And so he probably heard about Jesus from Paul and really liked the story and thought, this is amazing, our Messiah has come. So he went around and talked to people and learned everything that he could and then wrote it down in what we now call the Gospel of Luke. He wanted everybody to know what was going on. And in the, in the book of Luke, we read this story about our friends Simeon and Anna. So let's listen to what he wrote after Jesus was born. This particular event happened when Jesus was eight days old. So he's pretty, pretty small at this time. Now I'm going to read this to you from a paraphrase. The Jews had a law that a few days after a mother had a baby boy, 
she went to the temple in Jerusalem to offer a sacrifice to God. Mary and the baby Jesus, Mary had the baby Jesus, and now it was time to go to the temple. So who's going to the temple? Mary, Joseph, and baby Jesus. At this time, a man named Simeon spent his days in the temple. He was very old, but God had promised Simeon that he would not die until after he had seen God's Messiah, the one who would save the people of Israel. On that day, on that day, the Holy Spirit put it into Simeon's head that he should go to the temple on that day. So, Simeon was there waiting in the temple when Mary and Joseph and the baby Jesus came into the courtyard area. Simeon saw the baby. He took the baby Jesus in his arms, knowing immediately that this little baby was the one from God. Simeon praised God and said, Now I can die in peace, for I have seen the one that God has sent to be the Savior. Mary and Joseph stood and watched and listened and were just amazed at what was going on. Also in the temple at this time, there was a prophetess named Anna, who was 84 years old, even older than Miss Sharon. She had lived in the temple day and night for many years, ever since her husband died. I think she was only married to her husband for seven years. So Anna was always in the temple. She spent her days praying to God. When Anna saw the baby Jesus, she too recognized that this boy was sent from God. She knew this was the long-awaited Savior. She praised God and told everyone in the temple about it. And after this, Mary made the sacrifices that she was supposed to make, and the three returned home. So let's look at this picture again. What do you think is happening in this picture? I'm going to hold it over here. What do you think is happening in this picture? Uh, who are Simeon and Anna? Hmm. Where's Mary and Joseph? Well, we know where baby Jesus is. Can you get baby Jesus up? There's baby Jesus. And who is holding him? I believe that's Joseph. And there's perhaps Mary, because see, she's reaching over, has her hand on Joseph's shoulder, and is looking at the baby. And here's this lady that looks a little older than Miss Sharon, don't you think? Sort of an elderly woman. I believe that's Anna. And look, she's touching baby Jesus. She's telling the people, this is the Messiah, the one we've been waiting for. This is God's son. And I believe this is Simeon because look how, look at his gray beard. So he, you remember, he was rather elderly. So there is Simeon, and you notice he's got his hands on Jesus, and he is explaining to everybody this is what we've been waiting for. This is the coming Messiah that we have been thinking about. Now, so they're telling the good news. Some of you, when you were young, we used to sing that word, sing that song. Go into all the world, all the world, all the world. Go into all the world and teach the good news. I mean, go into the world and tell them about Jesus. Also be kind and loving like Jesus. So that's what Simeon and, Simeon and Anna are doing. They are spreading the good news. They're telling about Jesus, just like the shepherds did. You remember the shepherds? When the angels came, then they went and found Mary and Joseph and the baby Jesus. And then the Bible says, then they left and told everybody what had happened. Now, how do we tell the good news? We know we're supposed to do that, but how do we tell the good news? Well, we can not only tell the good news, but we can tell the good news by living the good news, by how we act. If we can try to act like Jesus, then we are living the good news, and that gives us an opportunity to tell other people about it. For example, we don't hit back. If somebody hits you, just don't turn around and hit them back. Now, don't stand there and let them hit you repeatedly or run away. But if you can avoid it, you should try not to push when other people push you. I've seen children in line and give a push, and the teacher will say, stop pushing. And the person says, well, he pushed me first. But we, don't, we just don't push. Just say, if you put, bump into somebody, say, excuse me, don't just start pushing. Obey our parents. That's living the good news. Being patient and kind. 
That's living the good news. Keeping your cameras on in school. I sometimes watch Paul while he's doing his virtual schooling and his teacher is always having to say, Ronnie, I can't see you, turn your camera on. But you know, that if you turn your camera off, the teacher is going to know you're doing something that you don't want her to see. So you need to leave your camera on to be kind. And you should talk to people, maybe if you know people that are lonely, maybe you haven't been able to see your grandparents in a long time and they can't get out and go places, maybe they have a computer. Maybe you can talk to them on FaceTime or Zoom. That would be a kind thing to do. That would be living the good news. You can send cards. We can still mail things. I think our mail still goes. You could just send a card and write, Jesus loves you and I do too. And that would be spreading the good news and living the good news. Simeon and Anna welcome Jesus to the temple. Well, how do we welcome people to our church? Well, right now it's very hard since we don't get to come like we used to. Uh, but we can still think of people and maybe send a note to some of the people in our church. Call them on the phone. Who are some people you might think about that you really want to tell them, you know, we appreciate you, we love you, we're sorry we don't get to see you, and just tell them about your day. Well, of course, I could think of Miss Jane, uh, who teaches just right over there next to me, Miss Rachel, who teaches some of the younger children, Miss Sherry and Miss Carolyn, who always help with Wednesday night and are now doing a lot planning for this uh, new church time worship curriculum that we're going to have. Miss Celeste and Miss Heidi Eford, who teach on Wednesday nights. Of course, Mr. Raymond, Mr. Brent, Mr. Alex, oh, pastors Meredith and Jeff, and of course, Mr. Victor, you know how he is. Now, you all don't know him, but right now, I'm being videoed by Mr. Josh. Thank you, Josh. We really appreciate all the things that you do for us. And we appreciate all those people that help take care of us and help us know about Jesus. Let's also remember our parents and grandparents, our aunts and uncles, who also love us and help take care of us, and they've told us about Jesus, too. I can always remember my grandmother reading me stories about Jesus when I was just two and three years old. Now, maybe you go to another church and you just happen to find our YouTube and you're listening to it. Uh, who do you want to thank for loving you and taking care of you? Think about that. Who in your church would you want to write? You would you want to talk to or maybe send something? Why don't we all try to send a card or draw a picture and send it to someone who loves us and takes care of us? That would be a good way to be spreading the good news and living the good news. So let's see if we can all do that this week. Now, let's pray. Welcoming God, thank you for the hope, peace, joy, and love that the birth of Jesus brings to the world. We praise you and give you thanks for Christ Jesus. Teach us to follow him. Help us to be kind and forgiving, even in these pandemic times. Help us to spread hope, peace, joy, and love during this Christmas season and throughout the year. In Jesus' name, amen. Now let's light our candles of hope, peace, joy, and love. And very excitingly, we're going to light the Christ candle. the candle of hope. Jesus is our hope. I'm going to light another match. That one sort of broke. Jesus is our hope. Peace. Jesus is the Prince of Peace. Joy. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. And love. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whosoever, whoever believes in him, will not perish, but have everlasting life. And now let's light our Christ candle, our Jesus candle.
light our Jesus candle and remember that we want to follow Jesus. We will be loving and kind and we will spread the good news. Now, let's see if we can decorate our tree just a little bit. Here it is right here. You remember our catechism question that we asked? Who was sent to be the Messiah? God sent Jesus to be Messiah. Messiah means anointed one. The New Testament word, let's see, God sent, I'm getting ahead of myself, I'm getting so excited about hanging them that I forgot to say it that I'm not hanging the ornaments. Who was sent to be the Messiah? God sent Jesus to be the Messiah. Messiah means anointed one. The New Testament word for Messiah is, do you remember? The New Testament word for Messiah is Christ. Can you see that one, Mr. Jones? The New Testament word for Messiah is Christ. Jesus is called the Christ because God anointed him to be the Savior who would rescue us from sin and death. God anointed him to be the Savior who would rescue us from sin and death. And we know that the Bible says that Jesus is the Wonderful Counselor. Wonderful Counselor. The Mighty God. The Everlasting Father. It's not going to hang so you can see it. The Everlasting Father and the Prince of Peace. And you remember that lesson we had where we said Jesus was the Alpha and the Omega and we talked about how that was the first and last letter of the Greek alphabet so it's like saying Jesus is the A to Z. That's what this says. Jesus is the Alpha and the Omega. Thank you for this Sunday school time together. I hope to see you soon. And when I see you, I will be filled with peace and love and joy. Particularly joy to see you again. Hope, peace, joy, love. Remember that God loves you and your church family loves you and Miss Sharon loves you. Goodbye. What do you think?